Hi there, Lindsay here. Happy New Year. Today I thought it would be fun to do a watercolor and I'm just working in my sketchbook because this is going to be a very, <laughs> a very irrelevant painting. Um, well, already actually. It's New Year's Day and I thought it would be fun to paint the uh, those, those Mylar balloons, those 2020 balloons. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, you could, you know, do letters that reflect what year it is. But um, I've been seeing a lot of uh, artists do this in markers, like alcohol markers, and I thought it was so cool and pretty looking. So I'm like, I'm going to do that in watercolor and see how it turns out. So I'm starting off by making bubble letters. And I'm just doing a two here. I'm going to do, I'm going to overlap them a little bit. I'm going to do an O. That's not very symmetrical. Just do a really light uh, lines for my drawing. Do another two over here. Of course, you could just draw 20 once and then just trace it. That would work. Hope you all had a good New Year's Eve. I didn't do much. I never do, actually. I'm usually, we're either transporting kids places or, you know, sometimes we go out to dinner. We didn't do anything yesterday. It was sort of stormy. And do another O. I just like to really use really light lines to begin with so I don't have to worry about erasing much. I'm using a pencil. You could use a, like a color erase colored pencil if you want. Doesn't really matter, whatever you want to do is fine. Let's try to keep them somewhat the same size and shape as others since you have, you know, two of each letter here. I think I'll add a little, uh, little strings on them. I don't know if they just have one each or if they'd have had a couple, but I'm just going to keep it simple and give them each one. One string. And if you want, you can throw in some just regular balloon shapes. Maybe even a star might be cool. Just remember, don't make them too crisp. Don't make the lines too crisp because they don't hold as much detail. Balloons are going to be puffier. Maybe do a heart over here. Just make it fill up your sketchbook page. That's the great thing about a sketchbook is you don't have to like, you don't have to worry about it being any sp uh, particular. You can make it fit however you want to make it fit. You don't have to have it, you know, any certain way. Just fill it up however you think it's going to look good in your sketchbook. All right, I keep a little plastic eraser handy just so I can erase any extra lines. I find that these don't mar as much as other as other erasers. So I'm just going to go through and take away any extraneous lines. Hopefully that shows up well enough. I kept it real light. You don't want to have it too dark or, or it will show. Of course, um, if you don't end up painting over a line, you can erase it. Sometimes the paint traps the stuff down, but um, if not, then you can, you know, if you didn't paint on top of it, you should be fine to erase it. So now I'm going to just start off with a wash, and I'm just going to use, use like a number six to eight round, or whatever is going to fit the size of your painting. This I'm going to start off with uh, some quinacridone red. I'm going to add some water. I'm using core watercolors, and I'm mixing in the tin, and when you buy the, um, let's say you get the size, the 12 tube, um, you get a fairly good sized tin, and then you can, I just put magnets on the bottom of half pans and squirt the paint out in there, and then you can use a tin as a palette, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm going to start with this really light pink up here for this heart. I'm going to do really, really light wash to begin with. You could even go lighter than this if you want to, but it is going to dry a little bit lighter. I'm going to go into the two here. I apologize for any background noises we might encounter today. I ha honestly, I haven't filmed since Christmas Eve. I've taken some time off. Anything that has shown up on my blog or YouTube channel since then has all been pre-recorded. Just 
just try not to have any puddles. Now I'm going to just grab a little bit of yellow and add that. Oh, actually, do I want to do purple? You know, I think I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go with a little bit of purple. That is just way too dark. I'm going to take a little of that color, bring it over to another little divot. I really like these, uh, the, um, the boxes that these core paints come in because you have that mixing area. The smaller sets used to come in these, um, these nice boxes too, but, but they don't anymore. They make them, they come in tiny tins now, I think because like some artists complained, they thought it was a waste of space, but I thought that was a bummer because I loved getting those bigger sets, but I'd already gotten mine. So I guess I was, I was lucky in that respect. So I do have, um, I, that's, it's very economical to purchase the core watercolors in the sets, like the 12 tube set, um, is like, I think around $40 on Blick, and it's like, for the 12 half pan set, which is actually less paint, I think it's like $60. And you still get a really nice metal tin that's actually bigger with more mixing area. So I recommend that over the half pans. I do want to get the half pans at some point, but you know, it's just kind of, I think it's just foolish because I've already got the tubes, but you know, there's just that kind of like, oh, I wish I had that, that'd be really nice. It's silly, I don't need it. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue on its own. By the way, the colors I'm using are quinacridone red, phthalo blue green shade, and um, cad yellow light. These paints come in sets of six, which if you're gonna, if you're not sure about these paints and you wanted to see what they're like, I recommend the high chroma set of six because I feel like the colors in that set really um, personify the core paints really well. And those I think are around, oh, 22 bucks or so on Blick. So I would recommend starting with that and then seeing what you think of the paints because they, they have a different binder, they flow really well. Um, and those colors are really transparent. So if you want a really transparent um, collection of colors, that would be a great one to start with. And then, um, and then probably like, if you really like them, you could either get the other sets of six, um, or you could go ahead and get the set of, you know, 12 or 24 and you might get some duplicates. Well, you will get some duplicates, but, um, those duplicated colors are really handy colors to have. So I feel like that might be a little dark. I'm going to add some water to that. The paper I'm working on is Stillman and Burn, um, beta series, mixed media sketchbook. I have a soft cover one. I really like it. I have this in a couple different sizes and it's one of the um, the sketchbooks that's always in my travel bag. But since it's January, um, it's a little too cold for me to paint, be painting watercolor outside. So I just brought it in. I was cleaning out my car and putting, uh, just kind of rearranging and you know downsizing and reorganizing and all that stuff that you do in the new year. I'm gonna do yellow on its own. I got wash is gonna be a little streaky, but I don't think it's gonna matter with uh, with what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna do this yellow here, really, really pale, really watery. So what we're gonna be going for is a metallic effect with these um, with these colors. So we're going for like a, a past, almost like a, uh, I don't want to say primary. It's almost like shift off of primary. Um, pastel -y kind of effect, kind of like a modern primary, I guess, metallic. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's a modern primary metallic effect we're going for. So I've got this kind of really peachy orange color here that I've got with the red and the, um, the yellow that I'm using. I'll list this co the colors below as well. When you, um, when you're putting your stuff in half pans, I highly recommend that you label your half pans so you know what to refill them with. Or if you're putting them in like a, a large studio palette, what I recommend is taking a piece of masking tape or artist tape, just something you can stick along the edge of the palette and writing down each of the colors with a Sharpie so that you always know what you have. It can be very confusing once the colors dry to know what you have. And I mean, if you're in a few mix by sight, it's not a huge deal. But then when you go to refill, you may forget, was that cadmium yellow? Was that cadmium yellow light? Was that cadmium lemon? Um, and it's not a huge deal if you put the wrong one in there, but if you're trying to like, um, you really love a color and you want to reorder it, you want to make sure that 
you know you know what color you put in there so that would be um, it only takes a couple minutes and it's really really a good idea all right so we're gonna let this dry completely dry so we don't end up lifting what's underneath and then we'll come back with our next layer Okay, I let this dry and then I went in with my eraser and erased over everything to remove the excess pencil lines. So um, it does take a little, and I even took away the strings because I figured I'll probably do those with a black pen and a, or, or a dark colored pen. And I might even want to go in and do some fine lining around some of these areas to give it that really crisp metallic feeling. Um, so I'm going to start here with this number two. I'm going to do the accent balloons after because I might want them to be a little bit more of a matte metallic rather than shiny, shiny. So I'm going to go in with my darkest values uh, with this pass. So I do my lights, then I do my darkest darks, then I go in with mid-tone mid -tone because I find if I do it this way, I don't fuss around so much. Now I'm hoping my hand is not going to be in the way. I'm going to kind of prop it up in a, a few times. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And... Um, Oh, maybe I'll have Jason zoom in on some of these parts while he's editing. That might make it a little bit easier to see. Um, so I'm going to start in just by getting the darkest shadows. And I might need to mix a little bit of blue with this to get it a little bit darker. But I'm going to go with the pure color for now and see what I can manage here. But when you're doing metallic, shiny metallic things, you're going to end up with a lot of really hard edges. So don't be afraid of that. I know it's usually a lot of times not what we want with watercolor, but that's what we're, you know, that's what we need when we're doing metallics. And I am just going to kind of work my way around. Now, you know, the me metallic things will have these kind of puckers in them where the mylar material is bending and inflating. And then we might have larger areas where you don't have so many little uh, creases. And you may have like a straighter passageway here where you don't have a lot. You need your paint kind of inky. It needs to be full strength, but it needs to flow off your brush. I'm using a number two pointed round here. You don't have to put every detail in. Keep that in mind. I know it can be very overwhelming when you're looking at something like this. And for reference, I would just recommend... Um, just doing a Google search for New Year's balloons and um, or or metallic number balloons. There's letters. There's all you could like spell out anything you want, which is kind of fun. The fun thing about this project is that like you could do a 16 for somebody's sweet 16. You could do um, you could spell somebody's name. You could do a Valentine's thing. I think I'll probably do a Valentine version of this with uh, markers later on this month, maybe for Critique Club or something. I, I'm not sure, but it's something I really wanted to explore. Now for this little, I think I'll make a little tab where the, where the string would attach a little bit darker. And I just need to give it a little definition on the edge. I want it a smidgen lighter. I'm adding a little bit of more water. When you dip your brush in the water, try to just get it on the bristles because you don't want to have those beads. You don't want any beads of water. This is a very controlled technique that we're doing here. And I'm also just kind of dabbing to get that kind of... Sometimes you, where the balloon's sewn together, you get that uh, kind of puckery fabric there. Or fabric, what do you call it? Plastic, I guess it would be. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to add some more water. I think I might do some of the mid-tone values if they're not touching the uh, other area. Now keep in mind, everything dries a little bit lighter. So even though those mid-tones look a little dark right now, they they shouldn't be that dark. Yeah, I think it might as well actually do the mid-tones while we're at it. Now look how much shine, look how that's starting to look shiny. Isn't that crazy? It's just like, because we're doing monotone, this is an excellent like value study thing as well. Yeah, we're really getting some uh, some depth in there. This is actually one of those deceiving things. It's easier than it looks. Oh, that's a relief. I had no idea. I've never painted um, Mylar balloons before, but I've been really inspired by seeing some people's alcohol marker work using this as a subject. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I'm just gonna do a little swipe up there. 
you know what? I'm gonna call that done other than maybe doing some white gel pen highlights. Look at that. I'm just gonna hold that still for a sec. I think that looks shiny. Oh my gosh, I really like that. Okay, so we're pretty much gonna be doing the same thing and just altering our colors. Um, so let me grab a little bit. Actually, let's see if we, no, that's too watery. We definitely need this stronger. So I'm just gonna grab some of the blue and add it right in there. Make sure I have it blue enough. There we go. That looks like a nice uh, medium purple. Again, I'm gonna tip my paper. So, I mean, that might not be comfortable for you to paint like this. Keep in mind, I'm only putting my hand under there and tipping it so that you can see my hand, so my hand's not in the way, basically, because that is a challenge that I have when I'm painting is, and I'm gonna move my light a little bit. I wanna make sure I'm not getting a shadow there, hopefully. I don't think I'm getting a shadow where I'm painting. Um, I do like to hold my brush fairly close to the um, bristles when I'm doing this because it does give me a little bit of control. Um, and I'm gonna just outline a little tab where the string would go. And let's see, now the bends here, we seem to get more of the uh, creases in the balloons right on the O corners. I need to add a little bit of water just to make my paint flow a little bit more. And just kind of go along the edge like that. It's funny because we're getting these reflections. It seems like, why are there shadows there? That's where it should be really light, right? Because we're seeing the, the roundest part is where we're seeing these shadows. And that's because it's not a shadow that we're seeing. We're seeing some really, some really strong reflections. And so that's where it can get a little bit confusing, but you're still, you know, going by, uh, by values. And I will post a still photo of this on Instagram and on my blog so you can definitely grab my uh, painting reference but as far as um, I'm using several just photos of party supplies for this just go on Google and search metallic letter balloons and pick what you like best you could even find a color that you want I'm making up my own colors you could find um, references for whatever colors you're looking for you could probably find a whole alphabet at like a party supply stores website so that you could um, you could put it together yourself. The only thing that I, that I would suggest is also have a photo of of um, of them together, just so you can kind of have the similar similar shadows. Uh, I think I wish I went with the uh, balloons on my reference that were solid all around, around instead of the seams on the top and the bottom. I don't like the look of that uh, as much, but I've already I've already put that shadow in there, so I've got to make the best of it. I'm just not gonna accentuate that much because it looks a little obscene, quite frankly. So I don't really want to. Uh, I want to accent that. <laughs> All right, mix up a little bit more of that color. Oops, I got a little water on the ferrule. Make sure you wipe, wipe the ferrule off so you don't end up dripping a bead of water when you're painting. I really like the tins that these core watercolors come in. It's a, a really nice, um, it's a really nice feature of those paints. I don't think they sell the tins on their own. That would be a really cool thing if they did. Okay, so get a little bit of a reflection coming over and you could actually take colors from whatever is next to it like I could add some reds onto this balloon if I wanted to on that side and I could have blues on the opposite side darks and then I'm going to go in with midtones just like I did with the other one. I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of a kind of dabbing over here where we get the where the edges are kind of like uh, sewn together or seamed together. Do a little bit of a dabbing there because you get that sometimes you get that little bit of a ruffle on the edge of a balloon where they're connected. I'm 
some, okay, now I'm gonna add some water. Probably even go into that mix I did earlier for my mid-tones. And then a lot of times it's just kind of like a little swoosh. This is actually really, really, uh, I know, I was kind of like, oh, is anyone going to like this? And I don't know if anyone will like this or not, but I'm, it's so fun, actually. I find this really, really fun to, really fun to paint. And I want to get underneath. And so you don't, it's almost like the, the shadows that you're putting in takes the place of the pencil lines. Oh, I like the way that looks. I think that's pretty cool. Maybe it might be a little bit on the dark side, but it's going to lighten up a little bit. Well, of course, we do have the white gel pen we can go in or a white colored pencil or something later. Okay, so now we're going to go to blue. And so this is, again, the little blue green shade. We're only using three colors here, which I think kind of makes it a little bit easier. Anytime that you take uh, we take extra colors away, it just reduces the amount of variables you have as far as making a mistake. Um, and remember, we had all these little these little shapes in here, so we're gonna we get all these little like kind of wiggly, kind of creasy areas. Then when you get to the straighter areas, you have less creases. Then when it starts to bend around again, you get more creases. So I mean, this is actually something you could definitely just make bubble letters because you know we all did that in junior high, right? Um, you can draw some bubble letters and then you can make them into balloons very easily because once you learn the steps of making something look reflective, it's pretty easy. I do recommend you have a nice pointy brush for this. This is um, my Creative Mark Mimic brush. But there's, you know, just look in your stash. You probably have a brush that'll do just fine. I recommend investing in good brushes, even if you're a beginner, especially if you're a beginner because, I mean working with and good brushes don't have to be really expensive um especially if you're going with like a faux fur like these are uh they make such a big difference in your your ability to paint well so does so does paper i honestly would say if you can only afford to you know if you have to pick between spending money and getting really good paper or getting really good um paint I would say get the paper the paper is going to affect your painting a lot more for brushes I would also recommend saving up and getting good brushes because if you take care of them they're going to last you a long time your detail brushes could wear out a little quicker uh, if you use them a lot just because you know if you're using them on rough paper it's almost thinking about think about like using sandpaper you know it's going to wear them down a little bit but um oh shoot I got the shape of that a little wrong but I think I can fix that with a gel pen um but it's an investment, but you'll have them. In fact, actually, I think this should be a little bit thicker in there. I'm going to go and do that. Um, and you'll, you know, you'll have them. I have some brushes, like especially golden tacklon brushes. Those are extremely durable. I have the half inch flat Elvin golden tacklon brush. I started painting with when I was um, seven with Mrs. Turner, my, who I see, I sent a Christmas card to her. Get one back. Wonderful watercolorist. Um, and that's the first brush I ever had, and I still have it. I got Barry Stationaries in Waterville, Maine. <laughs> I believe they're still in business too, which is always does my heart good to see those places still in business. But that was my first watercolor brush. I had a clear handle, which I thought was so cool. And uh, I still have it. It still works great. It was a half inch flat, and I had a grum Grumbacher. Um, hopefully my hand's not in the way there. I had a Grumbacher number six with a wooden handle, golden tack on, I think it was. And then I had a, a Robert Simmons uh, mop, and I can't remember what size it was, but that was a natural hairbrush, and that was bigger, and that was for wetting my paper beforehand. Um, but honestly, I never really used that brush much, and um, I'm sure she had any paint with it too because it would have hold, held a lot of water for like backgrounds and stuff. Um, I don't have rec much recollection on using that brush. I think that I probably had the bad habit as a beginner beginner painter 
as most seven-year-olds do, of, you know, fussing around with a small brush, probably, or using my really pretty clear-handled brush, because it was clear-handled, and I loved it. So I never really got a ton of use out of the, the, uh, the Robert Simmons. Of course, brushes are so much cheaper now than they were back in the early 80s. Um, I mean, now, like, those, that clear-handled brush probably was $20 back then, and it probably, a similar brush you could probably buy for, like, $5 now. So, I mean, consider inflation, how much a $20 brush was back in the 80s. I mean, that was a, that was a wonderful investment, you know, for a child, essentially. I'm so fortunate my parents put me in art classes and, and fostered that. I'm glad now I was not graceful enough for dance classes. <laughs> okay, we need to do a little bit there. Okay, now I need to go some a little bit. Well, I guess I did start doing midtones there. I'm gonna add a little water here and just um, add in the midtones anywhere I see them. I might have got a little heavy-handed with. Well, no, I see a lot of shadows. So I'm putting them in. I think the white highlight is really going to make a big difference on the on these. Oh, I think that's pretty. I think that looks real shiny. I'm I'm really pleased with this. I didn't know how this would do in watercolor. I was really thinking it would be more suited to alcohol marker, but I'm really pleased. Okay, so we're going to do green. Let's mix up fr some fresh here. I was a little nervous about using the cadmium yellow, but that's a color that I wanted, the hue that I wanted, um, because cadmium colors do tend to be more on the opaque side, but um, I don't think it's going to be an issue, especially with this thalo blue, which is super transparent and strong. I think we're going to be fine. Um, so that's something to consider when you're painting. Uh, how transparent is it, and is it going to work for your um, for your needs? But just knowing with the with the core watercolors, they are very they're even the ones that would tend to be more opaque, like your yellows, your cadmiums. They're still going to be pretty uh, pretty transparent. And the reason you want transparency, especially with a with a prod with something like this, is just so that you can layer up colors if you need to. This we really don't have a lot of layers, so that's um, that's kind of that kind of works really well. Of course, markers, alcohol markers, are completely transparent. Other, you know, you see the color, but the color is very transparent. I'm do a few lines at the bend. Oh, this is a really fun project. I think I needed a time, needed some time off because I was kind of like uh, Christmas Eve when I did my last painting there. I was really struggling, like trying to find something I was interested in enough to paint, and I, um, I don't know, I just really was having in a crisis of inspiration. I think, and I, I've spent this last week just kind of relaxing, reading, read the new test, the new book, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, loved it, um, and just kind of chilling out, and I guess I really needed that. I'm kind of someone who's never, who's kind of like not a big believer in the artistic muse, because I think that's kind of an excuse a lot of times, like waiting for the muse. Um, I think that you have got to just do the work, because you can't rely on the muse. The muse is fickle, and if you're constantly waiting to be inspired, you're gonna your skills are gonna atrophy. You need to be working. Um, you know, commercial artists that have deadlines have to work. They have to. They have whether they feel like it or not. They're they're pumping out content, and they are they're working. Oh, I got that a little off center. I'm not gonna worry about it though. Um, and I really think that because I mean, even if you're not in love with what you're doing, even if you're, like, what you're making is not, like, it's not scratching that creative itch that you have, there's just, you feel like there's something missing, um, you're still putting in the practice, and you're getting, you're getting better, you're building your skills, but I did, but I also definitely, uh, benefited from having a little time off, because I was just, I don't know, I was ready for a break, I guess, ready for a little bit of a vacation, and uh, some lazy time. <laughs> so don't feel bad if you need to take that time, especially after the holidays, because you've probably been doing a million other things. And I say that, but I'm the first person to be like, I feel so guilty for <laughs> being lazy. 
do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Except I did just do it. I just, just take some time off and it was fabulous. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do much. I visited, you know, other than the Christmas holiday visiting. Uh, but it was, it was good. Uh, just looking for any of these dark creases. And bends in the balloon. They tend to be around the corners of the O. The oval corners. And now we're going to go with our lighter shades. We're going to just add some water, get our mid-tones in. So your mid-tone should be kind of like in between the first layer that you put down and then the dark layer. So you go, you're shooting for something kind of in between that. Well, I guess I should have said at the beginning of the video, you feel free to to fast forward or skip around, but obviously people must know. <laughs> they must know about that by now. What? You can skip ahead? Why didn't anyone ever tell me that about YouTube? I don't have to watch the whole thing. Do a little swipe there. You just want to make sure you do leave enough of the original layer down there so that it, it shows up. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking that I don't want these to be super shiny. Um, I think I just maybe just mm, maybe do a little bit of the dark tone. Just a, kind of around the edges. Let's do. Um, let's do a little swoop. And then maybe just a kind of a little gather at the edges where they would be stitched. Uh, just kind of dabbing in a little bit here and there with my dark. Let's see, how would the planes of this go? We would kind of have a... Just trying to figure out how reflections would go. We'd have some flat areas and we'd have some rounder areas. Let me add a little bit of water. Let's do a little bit of mid-tone here. Let's, I, because it's so puffy, I think we need to do some sweepy shapes in the uh, divots. And we'll do a little balloon hanger there. That's fine. I'll uh, do some yellow. Just gonna move my pan out of the way. I don't know how that's gonna show up. Yellow is, you know, of course it tends to be more of an opaque color. Let's see. I'm just gonna kind of add it around the edges. And of course, you could do all this in one color if you wanted to. This kind of maybe make a, a highlight area and then just kind of blend it in, I guess. I might have to add a little purple or a little bit of that brown, orangey color. Um, let me scrub out the middle a little bit so I get a little bit more of a round feeling. This paper is not going to take a ton of scrubbing, so I've got to be pretty careful with it. Yep, that's going to need something else. Let's uh, let's do a little bit of this and see how that does. I think that'll work out all right. Purple might make it too brown. Orange is kind of, and brown is kind of like a desaturated orange. Do that and that will soften this edge here with just some a damp brush. I 
I think that's all right. I think that gives it that rounded, round feeling. Okay, and let's last but not least do this heart up here. We're gonna do the Quinn Red on its own, but kind of at the mid-tone value, not, not as dark as we had our darks there. And I'm just gonna start by kind of tapping the edges to give it that kind of like gathered mylar look. Just do a little bit of a swipe in there. Hmm. I probably should have made this a little bit different in color. Maybe add a little bit of yellow into that. Uh, it's not standing because it's it's so close to the color. And think about that too much. Or I could add a little purple to it. Yeah, I want to add a little purple to that actually. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because I just feel like it's so close to the color of that balloon that... It almost looks like it's part of it. Which means I'm going to have to just kind of glaze over this whole thing. That's all right. I've got a space heater going, and so everything's drying really fast. <laughs> so that's working out splendid. Yeah, sometimes you gotta, you gotta do that. You know, and that's, hey, sketchbook, right? You know, I'm not gonna worry about it. And then I can go I got a lot of purple going on in there. Then I can go in and darken some of these areas. And actually, since it's kind of wet on wet, it's going to give me that softer, more pearly versus metallic look that I was going for for these accent balloons. All right, I think I need to let this dry for right now. And then when we come back, we're going to use a little, do a little pen work, some fine liner for the strings, maybe some dark details, and then some white gel pen for highlights. We'll see you in a few seconds. Okay, make sure this is completely dry before you go on to the pen phase because you can end up digging the paper and ruining your pens if you don't. I'm going to start off with a 0.2 micron. Um, you could even go with something finer if you like. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first start with the balloon strings. Um, I recommend just a little thin plastic straight edge. This is like, oh my gosh, I think this was from like a math kit I got in junior high or something. I think it was like literally a lip smacker <laughs> math kit and a cute pink calculator. I don't know why I still have this, but uh, I still use it frequently. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The things that you have, I've been going through and just like really asking myself, do I still use this? Is there something better that I could, you know, use instead of this? Do I need two of these, you know? And it's funny, the things that are like the shabbiest, you know, cruddiest end up being the things that I use all the time. Like my travel bag, my travel, it's an old Grumbacher um, bag that has a stool built in and one of the zipper pulls the zipper pull broke off of the zipper head and it was kind of corroded and I couldn't, um, I couldn't find a, um, I couldn't, I put ribbon on it to try to like, try to keep it, but it would still pull off every time I used it and I waxed the zipper and stuff and I was like, maybe I should just get rid of this. But honestly, it's worked so much better than anything else that I kept it and, um, Anyway, I mean, I just didn't find anything else that worked better, even though it's kind of old and cruddy, you know, it's like the best thing that I've found to, you know, work for tr my travel, my travel painting needs. So it's funny. So I go through, I'm like, well, this thing's so shabby looking. I should probably just get rid of it. But, and it's funny, the things, a lot of times it's things I'm getting rid of that are fairly new that just didn't work out well for me. And, you know, it's like, well, might as well find somebody that can use it, right? Um, but it's just so funny, like the things that we have that have stood the test of time that probably to anybody else would just look like junk 
and then the stuff that you know never really worked all that well that we get rid of that looks like practically new and you know just I guess if, I guess if it is pretty grimy you know and used up it's because you used it I'm being real uh, careful with this I'm not putting too much black down because it is a black micron and I'm a lot just kind of putting them in the sharper darker areas more like on the edges it's just kind of giving it a little bit of an outline you might need to go back in even and add some add some paint over it if it seems too too dark I'm doing um, kind of like broken lines here I'm sorry my hands in the way uh, I don't know how to like do pen work so that it's uh, like this so that you can see it really well but it's mostly around the edges it's kind of like within the direct outside because it kind of um, gives you that almost like seam of where the stitching comes together it also can make things look really crisp but I'm definitely going a little bit on the light side and you don't have to do this you can totally leave that out I just think it can help give you that realism I think it looks best when you do have it just on the inside because it looks like that's that seam where the uh, the balloon is sealed I have a habit of touching my pen down before I'm actually quite ready to make the move and then I end up having to work in some weird little lines can be handy when separating two areas like an overlapping balloon area to help pull it forward I don't think I would want any just a little scant because this is a round balloon it's not like a mylar one but it does feel like it needs a little bit of um, a little bit of that kind of definition If we didn't have the black balloon strings, it would probably be difficult to add this without it looking weird, but I think that looks pretty good. And then for highlights, um, I'm just going to use a white gel pen. You could also use a white paint pen, Posca pen. This is a Uniball Signo Broad Gel Impact. I'm going to start off with, with this balloon, and I'm just going to do kind of like a really round circle, and then I'm just going to spread it with my finger. Over here because um, these are the softer uh, less like more pearl less shiny balloons so I'm kind of like adding the, the highlight and then just kind of smudging it I get there a few brighter brighter highlights in on these a lot of times your highlights are going to be right next to the darkest reflections and you want to highlight next to the wrinkles any smooth parts generally catch a little highlight And see how much shiny that looks as compared to the one next to it. This is kind of the icing on top. You don't have too much, but it does make a big difference, I think. I think it really adds to the uh, adds to the effect. I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. I know I've mentioned that before probably tired of hearing it I 
something you can look forward to. Well, I, I assume you look forward to. Um, I will be doing a updated craft art room tour. I will be doing a video on setting up an art space in um, probably one of the less desirable areas in your home, like your basement or attic. Um, I've had some requests for that. I think it would make a nice topic because I know a lot of people do not have space for a a craft room in like a spare bedroom on their main floor or you know because they've got other uses for those rooms so it'll be a video on how to take those spaces that aren't being used and turning them into a comfortable place where you can create and that will be coming up in a week or two on my channel so I'll be probably filming that later today. You can let me know if you're interested in that in the comments below. If you have any questions about any uh, that topic at all, if you want to go ahead and, and have me address them in the video, just leave those questions. Like maybe you're wondering about heating sources or lighting or, um, or something like that. I'm going to cover those topics, but if you have anything specific, then let me know. If it's not something that I've had to deal with, I can always research it before before I film. However, I've been in this basement space, unfinished basement space, might I, might I add, for um, 13 years. So I've encountered pretty much every basement issue that uh, that you would come across, I think. So hopefully I can save you some time, effort, money, aggravation if you're setting up a space in a basement. Or an attic for that matter. I mean, depending on what part of the country you're living in, I know basements are real common up north here. I'm in Maine. Um, I don't know if you guys have basements in the south as much, but gosh, you'd think you would because, you know, basements are always cool. I would think it would help keep your house cool. But I guess it could be like an issue with moisture or flooding or something if you don't have basements in the south. I'm not, I'm not sure really on that. I know they're doing fewer basements in homes nowadays. Well, I think this, this was really fun. This was really fun to paint. I hope you give it a try. I know it might seem like an odd subject matter, but boy, oh boy, it was fun. It's just kind of, I think sometimes these, the topics, the painting topics that are kind of frivolous, silly, are the most fun. Like this isn't a sketchbook. I'm not going to hang this. I'm not going to try to sell it. It's just, you know, for my own personal enjoyment. probably could have had some more shading, more darker color in there. You can always go in and add more. Just be careful. You want to make sure the gel pen's dry because it could smear on you. And for my little heart up here, I'm just going to do a little bit of a color and blend and then probably put like a little bit of a shinier all right and there you have it it was fun I hope you enjoyed it if so please give me a thumbs up before you go happy new year I think 2020 is gonna be a great year if you have any resolutions you can let me know in the comments below I love hearing people's resolutions I personally don't have one per se but um, except I am trying to be a little more easygoing and lighten up a bit because I tend to get kind of serious and uh, uptight and I think I probably said the same thing last year <laughs> but I'm hoping it will stick this year thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting